Frictions of bone and joints. This lecture is about musculoskeletal infections. A specific infection could have a specific infecting agent or a specific presentation or a specific treatment. I'm going to try to present the most common types of infection that probably has a specific thing about it. The majority of orthopedic surgical site infections are caused by staph aureus. Chronic paronychia, it is a fungal infection, candida albicans. It is infection of the nail fold and it is common in diabetics and it does not respond to antibiotics. It occurs in people with prolonged exposure to water such as gardeners, bartenders, dishwashers. There is really no abscess, but the area around the nail is swollen, red and tender. Treatment is topical antifungals. Myconazole may be used. You may want to do marsibulization in severe resistant cases. How about the herpetic wetulo? It is a self-limited disease that occurs from the herpes simplex virus. You can see that in the dentist, in respiratory therapist, in anesthesiologist. It can also affect toddlers. Some vesicles on the finger and have inflammation or redness at the base of the vesicle. The gram stain will be negative. Use Xanax test. And the treatment is a cyclovir, no surgery. Sickle cell can be associated with Salmonella osteomyelitis. How about Pseudomonas? Nail foot puncture in children. The IV drug abusers. Pseudomonas infection is responsible for the majority of the osteomyelitis following a nail puncture through the shoes. Pseudomonas is the most characteristic for this infection. Treatment IND remove the foreign bodies inside and give the patient antibiotics, but he must do an IND. In a patient that has chronic osteomyelitis and a draining sinus for years, rule out squamous cell carcinoma. Get a biopsy of the sinus and the skin. Charco or osteomyelitis. A diabetic patient with draining sinus of the foot for several months. You don't know if it is a charco foot or if it is an osteomyelitis. Do you look alike on the x-ray? MRI will not be helpful. That patient has plantar ulcer on the forefoot. So what you're going to do, you're going to probe that ulcer. And if the probe goes down to the bone, it's probably osteomyelitis and it will need debridement. How about fungus infection? It happens in sick, malnourished, old people with chronic illness. People that are on IV antibiotics for a long time and may be getting parenteral nutrition. Erysipelas. Erysipelas is group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. It affects the superficial layers of the skin. It has geographic demarcation or distribution over the extremity or over the face. And the treatment is antibiotics. Necrotizing fasciitis, polymicrobial, but there is a group A strep involved. Necrotizing fasciitis is rapidly progressive infection, affects the fascia early, and then the toxins liquefy the tissue underneath. The edema and the pain is more than what appears at the surface of the skin. It looks like a cellulitis, but really not a cellulitis. 
Underneath the fascia can be a really terrible infection which can involve all the tissues, including the muscles, without even having a smoking gun mark on the skin surface. The blisters and the bully are late. If you are in doubt and you don't know if it is cellulitis or necrotizing fasciitis, do biopsy by doing an incision going down to the fascia and see if the fascia and the muscles are involved. If the fascia is involved, then you probably have a necrotizing fasciitis. Hepatitis C is an associated risk factor for necrotizing fasciitis and the prognosis of these patients are worse. The treatment for this condition is emergency aggressive debridement. The mortality rate is high, can reach up to 25%, and it depends on early diagnosis. The mortality improves by early diagnosis and treatment. So the treatment is emergency aggressive debridement and antibiotics. How about gas gangrene? Gas gangrene occurs from Clostridia perfringens. Gas gangrene is an inero gram positive bacilli. It is almost like every bad infection is due to gram positive bacilli. There will be linear streaks of gas in the tissues. The treatment is wide depletment and leave the wound open plus antibiotics. We usually give penicillin G and clindamycin. There is a difference between Clostridia perfringens and Clostridia difficile. Clostridia difficile causes C. diff. Clostridia difficile can be caused by antibiotics, especially clindamycin, unexplained postoperative fever, leukocytosis, watery diarrhea may indicate infection by C. diff. It will treat it by an oral metronidazole or flagell. Human bite infection can be caused by Echinella crodens, and the treatment is augmenting. If the wound goes to a joint, you're going to have to clean and debride the joint in the operating room. Partonella hensali can be seen in cat scratch disease and in HIV patients. The cat scratch disease sometimes can give what appear to be swollen lymph nodes. It may be confused with a tumor, but you don't need to biopsy it. And that is different than cat bite. Dog and cat bites Pestrella maltosida. The cat bite is deeper and sharper and it causes deep injuries. And 50% of them will need surgery. Now we go to the dog bite. The dog bite has an average of five organisms and one of them is Pestrella malticida, another one Pestrella canis. The dog really causes a lot of tissue damage. It's not like a small little puncture wound of the cat and the injuries can be occult. The dog bite is just incredible force. Tearing of the tissue is visible, it's obvious. If the dog bite doesn't need breedment, you can treat it by antibiotics alone. The dog bite, you have at least five organisms. And one will stand out, the same one, like the cat bite, Pastrella multicida, and the treatment is augmenting. Pantum valentine leucocidin. Cytotoxin that is usually present in community-acquired MRSA and not in a hospital-acquired MRSA. PVL has the ability to lyse the white blood cells and cause tissue necrosis and rapid abscess formation.
The PVL positive strains of community acquired MRSA are associated with a high incidence of DVT, septic emboli, sepsis, and multi system organ failure. How about the microbacteria marinum? It's an atypical microbacteria. It's an acid fast bacilli. The bacteria grow in a low temperature culture at 30 degrees centigrade. It grows in lonestein Jensen medium. It will require a long incubation period. The infection usually happens in aquarium, fresh or salt water. It also occurs in people dealing with fish tanks or swimming pools. Patient will have ulcers, nodules, non-caseating granulomas. The hand and wrist are affected in 50% of cases. Treatment, oral antibiotics, if diagnosed early. Surgery is done in the late stages and in deep infection. The surgery entails debridement in addition to oral antibiotics for approximately three months. Special culture for bacteria. Some of the bacteria are grown in a special culture. Like Kingle Kingi will grow in a blood culture. Domyobacterium avium, Middlebrook medium. The E. coli, Loria bertani medium. The Neisseria gonorrhea, chocolate agar. So Neisseria gonorrhea, chocolate agar, if the specimen comes from a sterile source like a joint fluid, but if the specimen comes from a contaminated source such as a vaginal swab or urethral swab, then the median will be Thayer Martin agar medium. How about the Vibrio Volni Ficus? I call it Vibro, Silfish and Brackish, Gram Negative Rods, Septicemia and Gastroenteritis. The wound infection will be hemorrhagic bully, subcutaneous bleeding, necrosis. The treatment is debridement and broad spectrum antibiotics. How about Lyme's disease? The bug bite. Spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi. It lives in white tailed deer. The vector is a tech. Early, you will get the pulse eye, which is erythema migraines. In orthopedic, we get the chronic inflammatory arthritis. The knee will be swollen, but not too painful. You can get Bill's palsy. Treatment is antibiotics. If you are less than 8, you'll get amoxicillin. More than 8, you get doxycycline. Because in little kids, the doxy will create a staining of the teeth. So don't use it in little kids. The period of antibiotics will be between 3 to 6 weeks. Gonococcal arthritis occurs in young adults. It is the most common septic arthritis in a young, healthy, sexually active person. It can cause migratory septic joints. It's caused by intracellular gram-negative diblococci, and the treatment is antibiotics, no surgery. The antibiotic is ceftriaxone. Sporotrichosis. Sporotrichosis. It's a fungus. It happened on rose growers. The injury happened from thorns and from splinters. You can get granulomas, nodules, then ulcers, lymphatic spread. The HE stain will show asteroid body. The treatment is debridement and the amphotericin because it's fungus and potassium iodide. Other infections. The newborn will get infection two to four weeks with group B strep. The hips and knees, prothetic joints, will get infection with the staph epi or staph aureus.
The shoulders, prosthesis, and rotator cuff repair will get infection by P. acne, Brody's abscess, probably a staph aureus. Always suspect infection. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis may look like an infection, but it is not. In young kids, it is a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. When you aspirate fluid from a joint, do a cell count, culture, and try to identify crystals for gout or pseudo-gout.